It has been a long wait for Group Iron Man, but we're finally here. My name is Peter, and my friends and I have been cooking up an idea for a unique experience for Group Iron Man over the past few months. Inspired by the leagues that came before us in Old School RuneScape, each of our Iron Man will be region locked. Each of us will have access to Mythstalin and Fossil Island. This way we can do a lot of the beginner quests and get basic gear to jumpstart our journeys. Mythstalin will also act as a central hub of sorts. That way we can exchange items and money from our regions. There's a lot of other content that we're going to need to meet up for, as you'll see later on. My regions will be the desert, Asgarnia, and Mauritania. I'm really excited about these regions, and I'm super happy that I got them. I had Asgarnia and Mauritania in my Trailblazer account, but I didn't have the desert. There are so many important items in my regions, like Barrows in Mauritania and God Wars Dungeon in Asgarnia. There's going to be a lot of content from my three regions, and I am so excited to get going. Hey guys, it's Dominic. My areas are going to be Fremnik, Taronwin, and Kandarin. Uh, really looking forward to exploring some new content I'm not used to, and I think we're all really excited to start this project and get to record the whole experience for everyone to watch. Hi, my name is Corey, and I'll be locked to the wilderness, Krajima, and Zaya. I'm excited to AFK at Wintertown for early supplies and then relax with sand crabs for easy XP. The other two are going to be toiling away in swamps and frigid northlands while I relax on the beach. We will have full control over our own regions, and others will have to pay to access content or quests in our areas. Talking about quests, each quest that requires another person's region will cost us 100,000 gold per quest point. Even if that quest lasts two seconds into someone else's region, we still have to pay the full tax. Each item that's rewarded from quests is only allowed to be used for continuing the quest line, or you can use it if you own that region's quest, which is determined by where the quest is started. Take Desert Treasure, for example. I can do everything that Desert Treasure unlocks since I own the desert, but if someone else does Desert Treasure, they can't use anything from that quest unless it's needed for another quest going forward. Slayer is another sticking point, since it is mostly random what we're assigned. There has to be a way for us to venture out into other regions to complete tasks if absolutely necessary. We don't want to get stuck at level 10 Slayer and not be able to progress and lock out a lot of good content in, within our own regions. Each Slayer task in another region will cost 1k times our Slayer level at the start of the task. Again, we'll only be able to use this feature if we cannot complete our task within our own regions. If Dominic or Cory gets assigned Crawling Hands really early on, they have no way to get to it unless they go to Mauritania. That's just one example out of many that could cause us to be stuck at a low Slayer level and not be able to do some content that is great within our own regions. Untradeable gear was another talking point. We didn't want to lock out best in slot gear at some point in our accounts. It would slow down progress and content would be a lot slower. We'll have to pay a one-time tax to access the pieces of gear that are now shown. These activities are the only ones that we will be able to go outside of our regions for, no exceptions. Each activity will cost us 200,000 coins, which again, is just a one-time fee. If I want to complete Jad, I would have to pay Corey 200,000 gold. Then I have permanent access to the fight caves. If I get an Inferno Cape, then I'd have to do it again. So again, I don't have to pay 200,000 gold to go back to get another fire cape. Our biggest disagreements came during discussing clues. Clue steps is another area that will need cross-region capability if we're to achieve some of our high goals. Eventually, we came to the idea that is now shown. Basically, you pay for steps outside of your region individually. The amount paid to the person scales with the amount of steps that are outside their region. For example, if the first step on a clue is outside of my region, it'll be the maximum amount for that clue tier. Then, a second step later on that needs to be outside my region as well will be a little bit less. This alleviates the pain of trying to get important clue exclusive items. You could get really unlucky and have all your steps for that clue to be in regions that you don't belong to, which would cost a lot, but that's 
fairly unlikely. We felt this was a fair compromise between not being able to complete what we want to complete or give up rewards or something like that, but also having to pay region owners for accessing their territory. That's the general idea of what we're going with, the guidelines, rules, taxes that we'll have to pay to other people. There will be a lot more smaller details that we're going to have to bring up when we start our next episode. I can't wait to share our journey with all of you, and I hope to see you on the next video. Oh, I almost forgot. All this will take place on PvP Worlds only. Nah, just kidding. There's no way we're doing that. I hope you enjoy our journey, and we appreciate any feedback you have for us. And don't forget to like and subscribe.